blessed sunshine When the peaceful, happy moments so When Jesus shows his smiling face There is sunshine in my soul There is music in my soul today Righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, he made the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. To hide his face, I rest on his sun changing grace. In every high and my anchor holds within the veil, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. He is Lord. shall come with trumpet sound in his righteousness alone 
And what is she having from Maui? That's my boss's daughter. Okay. I'm just gonna say Kelsey. Jersey. She's just struggling to find her way. Okay, Jersey. Anybody else have a prayer request? It's so important, Mike. There's a family. When we come to that when we gather together that we lift each other up and remember each other in prayer. It's part of what the body's supposed to do. And so we want to uh, pray for everybody. Lori's a little bit sick today with an upset stomach. Nothing major she said, but didn't want to get anybody sick, so she's listening through the walls with Ragnar. But let's uh, go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we just praise you, Lord. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you are a good God, a God who wants to be involved in our lives, and who gave us this gift of prayer so that we can communicate with you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who is in us and knows all and can pray for us when we don't know how to pray. Lord, we just lift you up today. We, we look at our world and it seems like a, a chaotic place right now, and it is, because it needs Jesus. <clears throat> Lord, we just ask that you, your spirit be poured out on, on your people, that you give us a reassurance and courage, Lord, to stand for you, to love you and to love others with the love of Jesus, to not be overwhelmed by the circumstances that we find ourselves in, but trust you. Uh, Lord, I lift these prayer requests up to you. I, I lift up Paul, as, and I praise you for keeping your hand of healing on him, Lord, and I just ask that you uh, continue to heal his body. We're so grateful for him and, and Linda and the entire family. What a blessing they are to put in now. And Lord, I lift up Pastor Tom and Carrie, and I just ask that you keep them safe as they travel. Um, we're so thankful for them, and um, we're, we're excited about their new grandson. Bless them, keep them all safe, uh, Lord, and you, Tom, as a speaker. Lord, I just lift up Lucy to you, and I just thank you for her love for you and her life and the impact she had here at Kukadaz. Just continue to heal her body. Thank you for restoring her health. We're so grateful for that, Heavenly Father. Lord, I lift up Pastor Herschel. And I'm, I'm so thankful, Heavenly Father, that you brought him through surgery and you're, you're healing his body. Continue, continue to heal him, Lord. Lord, I lift up Kelsey to you, and I just ask that you touch her body as she fights this COVID virus. Help her to heal. Uh, Lord, we just we claim healing in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I lift up Jersey to you. And I ask you to be active in her life and guide her, Lord. And you know how difficult uh, coming into adulthood is, and life is hard. We just ask that you continue to pursue her and be with her and help her to to seek you and for Paul Hart. Give her wisdom of what she uh, what you plans you have for her, Lord. I lift up Mike and his family, Lord, and I, I thank you for them. And Lord, I just trust that you're working in that situation. Continue to uh, pour out your spirit in, into them. Help them, Lord, just to have humility and love and not be prideful, but to um, understand each other and Lord, we, we trust that you are a God of reconciliation. And we trust that you're working there, even when it seems like you're not. And Lord, I just lift up Lori to you and ask that you just touch her body and, and heal her, Lord. I'm so thankful for um, this church, this body, Lord. Continue to inspire us to be your hands and feet, to reach out to people. Be with Tali and Jamie as they go through this quarantine, Lord, and I just ask you to protect them. The Lord, there's so many that are here that are high risk or they're afraid. Lord, we just ask that you be with them and reassure them. Lord, I thank you for everybody on the mainland that's uh, watching this today. Um, we're so blessed to have them be part of us. Continue to keep them safe and inspire them, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just pray that um, you bless this message today, that it be the message that you would have everyone here. Let it be impactful. Help us to receive it. Help our ears to be open and our hearts to be open. And Lord, we just love you. We give you all the glory. In your name. Amen. Amen. Well,
Aloha and good morning, church. Aloha. Aloha and good morning. Good morning. So good to see you guys. I don't know what it is about outside. Sometimes it seems like outside puts you guys to sleep. I don't know. But I'm so blessed to be here. And I'm so blessed to be able to lead us into God's Word this morning. And I can't emphasize that enough. I really am blessed. And I'm amazed that God would use me in such a way. I was such a sinner. I wasn't a good person. I made so many bad choices and decisions. And the amazing thing about God is that no matter the choices you make, He continues to pursue you with a passion and a love. He created each one of us for a purpose. And He pursues us and He says, let me show you that purpose. That's what he did with my life. He didn't hold my past sin against me. He didn't hold the mistakes that I committed against me. He said, I have a plan for you. Let me turn you into the creation that I meant for you to be. That's the amazing thing about God's love. Amen? Amen. God wants us, each one of us, to count our blessings every single day. He does. He doesn't want us to focus on um, the trial or the circumstances around us. He wants us to count our own blessings every single day. We forget to count our blessings so much of the time. Today I want to read out of Psalms 103. Do you have your Bible? Psalms 103, and this is a beautiful psalm. And God, when I was preparing for this sermon, God put this psalm on my heart, and I've read it several times, and it's an amazing psalm. It's a psalm of David, Psalms 103. David understood who God was and what God was about. He knew God's character, yeah? And even though David was going through trials in his life, remember, he was anointed to be king of Israel and Saul was trying to kill him. And he had to spare. But, but a lot of the time he had to spare. But he always remembered who God was. And that God was had chosen him for a plan that would come about in God's timing, not in David's time. Yeah. God has a perfect time for everything. And so uh, David understood that God was a God of love and mercy. And that God had blessed him, that every good blessing, every good thing came from God above, and that he shows that in this psalm. So let's read this God's word. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. David understood how easy it is to praise the Lord with our lips. He wanted every bit of himself to praise the Lord his spirit, his flesh, his mouth, his voice, everything to praise the Lord. He knew that God was holy. Now listen to this, verse 2. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. David is talking about his blessing. God blessed David greatly. And even in the midst of his trials, he asked God to help him remember the good things, yeah, the blessings that he has. We need to stop sometimes and remember how God has blessed us in our lives. Amen? Amen. Verse 3, he forgives all my sins and he heals all of my diseases. He redeems me from death. He crowns me with love and bitter mercy. He buys us. He purchases us. He redeems us. Yeah, there's a cost. God pays that cost through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteous, righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He gives us Jesus. Jesus is our righteousness. Jesus is our justice. Amen? Amen, church? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> he revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. His character is one of 
unfailing love, grace, and mercy. Yeah? He loves us unconditionally. He revealed that to Moses and he delivered the people of Israel because they cried out to him. And he delivered them. Verse 8. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He loves us. He doesn't. He's not a God that seeks to punish us. He seeks to correct us and um, convict us in our spirit when we're doing things that we shouldn't do. He doesn't want to punish us. He wants us to walk the right path. Amen? He doesn't give us what we deserve, which is death. Verse 9. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all of our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. God forgives the things that we've done when we, when we repent, when we confess, when we ask Him to forgive us, and then it's gone. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. This next verse is one of my favorites in this psalm. The Lord is like a father to His children, tender and compassionate to those who fear Him. Now, most of us had an earthly father. Uh, my father uh, was a big, a big, strong man, rough. His hands were rough. He had big hands, construction worker. Um, yet he was so tender and compassionate to us. And I remember when I was a little boy, I couldn't wait before bedtime uh, to climb on his lap. My dad had always he had a wooden rocking chair that he sat in and rocked in. The one with the wooden slats. So there was no padding on it. It was a hard chair. Um, he would be in that chair relaxing after a hard day of work. We, I would climb up on his lap, and he, he just had compassion, and he was so tender. And, and he would read the book Myrtle the Turtle to me. And I remember that. That was probably when I was around four years old. But I had fear for him, not in a bad way. I understood that he loved me and was tender, but um, when I was bad, I got licking. Yeah, those big hands came in handy to correct me. Yeah, I understood that. And so when he told me to do something, I listened, but not out of fear that he's going to beat me out of love. And then I understood the boundaries that he set. And that's what God does for us. And he wants us to do for our children. Amen. 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 14. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, like wildflowers. We bloom and die. The wind blows and we are gone, although, as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever for those who fear Him. In the, in the overall scheme of eternity, David really understood how long life was. Yeah? It's just a, it's a steam, it's a dust, a wind, a, a flower that withers and fades. We get caught up in our current reality and we think it's uh, going on forever. The situations, the COVID virus, whatever other situations that we're going through, it, it consumes us. It takes all of our attention. We forget that God is good, that he has blessed us, and he has given us eternal life. And these words promise us that his love remains with us forever. That, that, that implies that there is an, a, an eternity with Him for those who accept Him. Amen? His salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to His covenant, of those who obey His command, commandments. That's a promise of God, a blessing that we can count on when we live in God's will. When we are submissive to Him, when we trust Him, and we raise our children up in Him, God promises to bless them and their children. Yeah? God wants us to raise our kids up in the Lord. And church, there's nothing greater than you can do for your children than to raise them up to know God. There's nothing greater. You can send them to the best school in the world. It's not
not better than raising them up in the Lord. Amen? The Lord has made the heavens his throne. From there he rules over everything. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans, listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels, who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, everything he has created, everything in all of his kingdom. Let all that I am praise the Lord. God is sovereign and he has a plan. And, and more importantly, sir, listen to the message of this song. God is on our side. God is on our side. Isn't that exciting? Amen. He loves us. He's given us eternal life through Jesus. He's given us a hope and a future. He's given us heaven and eternity, and he's, he's placed it in our heart. It's what makes us seek him. We will be with him for eternity. And he wants us to remember everything that we are going through and experiencing in this life is temporary. Yeah? But most importantly, he wants us to remember that he loves us. He loves us. And he is for us. He truly is. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for this psalm, this reminder to count our blessings, to remember all that you've done for us. Lord, help us to live for you, to not get overwhelmed by life circumstances, to not be fearful, but to trust you, to, to move, Lord, where you will take us, to understand that you're a sovereign God, and that your plan is good, and that we can trust you. Lord, continue to bless this church, bless us as we continue to study, study this word, this message today. In your heavenly name, amen. 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 Now last week I spoke about God, God and his amazing love. You guys remember that? Yeah? God and his amazing love. His unconditional love for us. A love so great that he gave us Jesus. A love so great that he provided the sacrificial lamb for our sins. Just as he did for Abraham and Isaac so long ago, yeah? Only this time, instead of a lamb, the sacrifice was Jesus. And because of that gift, and that's what it is, it's a gift, make no mistake, because we cannot earn it. Nothing we can do can earn that gift, yeah? Our salvation is a gift. And because of that, we have freedom from the bondage of sin. Listen to that. We have freedom from the bondage of sin. Prior to that gift, we couldn't overcome sin. God gave us the law to convict us of the sin. So we knew right from wrong, but it still didn't free us from sin. We could try to be as perfect as we could. We failed. Yeah? Anybody ever experience that? Amen. Yeah. We all have, if we're honest. But God gave us victory over that through Jesus Christ. And he gave us freedom from the law. We're not bound to the law because we can't keep the law. Yeah? So the law, Jesus fulfilled it. Does that mean that we just continue to sin and, and go about our life however we want? No. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. It just means that we are not um, chained to it, to sin or the law. And, and that we can stop trying to keep something that we're powerless to do on our own. Amen? Amen. Unmerited grace and mercy. It's a beautiful message. Yeah? One that people love to hear. And, and it's true. Yeah? How many love to hear about unmerited grace and mercy? If we're honest. Yeah? But on its own, church, and this is the important part, because God really put on my heart to share this message with you today. On its own, it's incomplete. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to tell you. You see, the church probably 
probably all of us in the Western Church is guilty of fixating on this part, this unmerited grace and mercy. Yeah? And it's an important part. Don't get me wrong. It's part of God's plan. Grace and love through unmerited, though it's unmerited, comes from Jesus. And it's unmerited because there's nothing we can do to earn it. It's a free gift of grace. Yeah, hence the term unmerited grace, which means basically that it's not earned. Yeah, it's given, but it's not earned. Or it means that we're not receiving what we do have coming, which is uh, justice, yeah, punishment for our sins. But it's only part of the message. And, and granted, it is most people's favorite part, one that we like to hear over and over, one that we can recite, one that we uh, claim to be true, and it is. But for it to be true, we have to have the complete message and the complete truth, the rest of the plan. And so what is the rest of the message and the rest of the plan? Let's look at Mark 1, the book of Mark 1, verses 1 through 8. Because God wants us to know the whole plan. So he gave us scripture. Now Mark is probably uh, my favorite gospel. Primarily because God uh, named the book after me. <laughs> now let me explain. Let me explain. You guys already knew it, yeah? I just... Psalms 139 says that God knew us at the beginning of, of creation. Yeah, he knew us. And he even knew our name. So he knew my name before he named the book of Mark. So therefore, okay. it was named after me. Yeah. At least that's, I'm, I'm going to hang my hat on that. So let's take a look at this passage. Mark 1, 1 through 8. Mark 1, 1 through 8. I thought I wrote it down, but I didn't. This is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that the people should be baptized to show they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes, his clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. John announced, someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. So much greater that I am not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So verse 4 and 5 are key to the message that God has given us about salvation. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had, and this is key, repented of their sin. Repented of their sin and turned to God to be forgiven. John brought a message of repentance. Yeah? To repent or repentance. Turning away from our sin. And more importantly, turning back to God. Yeah? And then, confession. And then forgiveness. Yeah? But we have to have the repentance. Yeah? Repentance. Confession, forgiveness, through faith in Jesus Christ and His cleansing blood. 
Yeah? That's where our forgiveness comes from. Our faith in, in Jesus Christ on the cross, crucified. But without repentance, there is no unmerited grace or, or mercy. Yeah? I, the church doesn't like to People don't like to hear that part. But it's the truth. The church and people want unmerited grace and mercy and, and they're more than willing to confess their sins. I've seen this over and over. People are more than willing to confess, Pastor, I am sinful. This is what I did. Please, will Jesus forgive me? Without ever turning to God and turning away from their sin. We don't like to repent. And I've heard some pastors and people Oh, don't worry about that, because God is full of grace and mercy and unconditional love, which is true because he gave us Jesus. But it still takes an act of repentance. We have to have a contrite heart, and with without repentance, there's no contrite, there's no contrition. We're not sorry. We confess, and we'll keep on sinning. And we expect God to forgive us. And we think that we're living in this blessing. But we're headed towards destruction. Yeah? So church, we need repentance. And repentance is a vital part of salvation. To turn from sin, to turn away from self, away from the world, and to return to God Almighty. That's what God wants us to do as a people. And what the scripture shows us throughout the history of the Bible that the, the people turned away from God they might confess their sin there were dire consequences because of their sin it didn't matter how much they confessed until they repented until they turned back to God they were outside of God's blessing God did not deliver them until they turned back to him amen yeah. Repentance is so important. With, without it, there isn't salvation. Jesus' ministry, Jesus' ministry on earth, listen to this, was the ministry of repentance. Yeah? We, we, we lose track of that. We say, okay, you went to the cross and died for me. You gave me life through your death, through your blood and resurrection. We forget that his was a ministry of repentance. It's kind of a big thing, church. He said in Matthew 4, 17, Jesus, this is Jesus. Repent of your sins and turn or return to God. For the kingdom of heaven is near. Same message as John the Baptist. Yeah? It's what God expects of us. It's, it's what enables him to work. If, if, we're always, if he's behind us and we're doing whatever we want, we cannot be in his will. Yeah? God has a plan. And when I shared how blessed I was to serve here, that God would use me in the capacity that he's using me in, he never would have had I not repented and turned back towards him. And it's the same for all of us. And it's the same for the church. Repentance has to be part of who we are as Christians. Amen? I'm not talking about condemnation. Because there's no condemnation in Christ. But it's, it's about turning away from whatever is leading us to a life of destruction. Jesus didn't say, I've come to give you unmerited grace and mercy. He didn't say that. His actions were that. He didn't say it because you can't have it unless you repentance is part of it. Anything short of repentance, church, is a mockery to the gift that comes through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. 
Anything short of repentance is a mockery of the gift of salvation, is a mockery of God's unmerited grace and mercy. When we uh, accept this gift of salvation but continue to live in a life of sin, we don't really believe we have this gift of salvation. Because if we believed it, our gratitude would be so overwhelming that we would fall on our face. Because we're not receiving what we deserve to receive, which is death. Amen? Amen. Church, let us not take the gift for granted. God doesn't want us to turn to Him for a little while. And that's it, and then go back about our own lives. He doesn't want us to live our life with no commitment to Him. At least no inconvenient commitment. The trouble with humanity is that we want the world. And we want unmerited grace and mercy. We want them both. And God wants us to experience the goodness that He has created. But He wants us to be committed to Him, to, to be facing Him, and not let the things of the world pull us away from Him. He wants us to trust Him and abide in His will. But for most of the church, can't even be bothered to stop sinning. And if we hear a message of repentance, we're going to go find a different church where they don't preach that because it makes me feel better. We just keep on feeding the flesh, saying, I'm covered by grace. <clears throat> Claiming a free gift that we don't even realize we don't even have. Because there's no repentance in our life. This is a hard message to preach. But it's the truth that we need to understand. And when we don't understand what's going on around us, it's because we haven't repented, we're not facing God, and we're living outside of His blessing. The world burns. Because God won't bless evil. And anything that isn't of God is evil. Confession and asking for forgiveness does not honor God. Listen to this. Confession and asking forgiveness does not honor God when there's no repentance involved. It's their hollow words. But we want our cake. I have friends, acquaintances who use the logic, I'm going to sin in, in word, thought, and deed every day. But God's grace is sufficient. Amen. There's no repentance in that. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect when you repent, but I'm, going to, I'm saying that when you hang your hat on that theology, and there's no repentance, and you continue your life in sin, thinking that the grace of Jesus is going to cover you, you're going to be surprised one day. Because without the repentance, without the turning away from that sin, you are not in God's will. And you're not living in His grace. And you're not living under His blessing. So many people use that excuse to, to bypass or ignore the repentance part. We forget that God sent Jesus. Listen, church, listen. God sent Jesus so that we could turn or return. Yeah? Return to God. Jesus is the ladder. It's what enables us to return to God. 
what enables us to have a personal relationship with him, with him. So much of the time we forget that God is holy and that he he made great promises. He made great provision for us. For his unbelievable, sac unbelievable sacrifice of his only begotten son. And because of that sacrifice, he expects us to repent. To forgo our right to do what we want, to do what pleases us in favor of submitting to a holy God with a holy plan. We are a generation that loves to sin. Jesus told us the wages of sin is death. It's pretty cut and dry. There's no wiggle room there. Yeah? There is a hell and it's real. And I don't want to go there. And you don't want to go there. But until we repent as, a, as an individual and as a body and as a whole church, we're, we're doomed for destruction. Are you saying, you might be saying, but pastor, what about grace? Well, it's there. It is there. But Jesus' message was one of repentance. These are his words. Repent. For the kingdom of God is near. So repentance, confession, and then forgiveness. And that's what gives us unmerited grace and mercy. Through the blood of Jesus on the cross. Nothing that we do can earn it. Repentance literally means to fall on your face in front of God because you know that what you deserve is death. But turn to Him. And the enemy, he does his usual thing. He comes up and he says, Did Jesus really say that sin leads to death? Surely it doesn't lead to death. Because God gives us has unconditional love. His love never fails. So how could you could sin lead to death? Did he really say that? Didn't God send Jesus to give grace and mercy? You can do whatever you want. And we buy into that thinking because we want to. And it becomes a good justification to sin. And throughout the history of the Bible, we see a pattern. God's blessing, and then sin, turning away from God. Consequences, God's judgment. People cry out to Him. They repent. They confess their sin. They seek forgiveness. God delivers them. He gives them grace and mercy over and over. The Psalms that we read, read today said that He is a God of patience. And this proves that. Yeah? He loves us. God is a patient God. Church, our world is on fire. It seems to be falling down all around us. As a body of believers, we confess and, and seek forgiveness, but we need to also repent and ask God to make us into the body that He created us to be. That we need to abide in His will. That we need to share the love of Jesus in everything that we do. That we need to honor God's creation. And what I mean by that is He created us for a purpose. And honor Him by living in that purpose. And allowing Him to use us the way He created us to be used. For His glory. Amen? Amen. We have to turn back to God. And when we do, history shows us that He will bless us. He forgives us. He already forgave us. He will bless us. Until there's repentance, God cannot intervene. He won't because He's holy. And He's not a puppet or a genie. He's our holy God. Or maybe there's chaos in your life and you want God to intervene and He will. He promises to. You need to make sure you're right.
right, that, that you have repented, that you are abiding in His will. Make sure that you have turned back to Him, that you have made Him the most important things in our lives. And when we do that individually, when we live to honor Him, He will again bless us. Acts 3.19 says, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Luke 13.3 says, But unless you repent, you too will all perish. There's a cost to not repenting. Romans 2.5 says, But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, the day of God's wrath, when His righteous judgment will be revealed, is nigh. Church, God loves us, and we can see how much He loves us when we count our blessings, when we abide in Him, and when we trust His will for our lives. He desires for us to have right relationship with Him. He wants us to turn to Him and away from the world. And this is serious stuff. This is a serious message. In a moment, I'm going to pray. But first, I want everybody here to, to just bow your head. Reflect on your life, on the goodness of God. How are things between you and Him? Have you been slow to repent, but quick to, re con to uh, confess and seek forgiveness? I know this message challenged me this week. If God is a patient God. His blessing is real and waiting for us to return to Him. He will bless us. He will bless our country. He'll bless His church. He'll bless our island. Even for the remnant who falls on our knees. I don't know about you, but I know I had to do some hard soul searching this week. You might be thinking, but pastor, no matter what I do, I keep going back to the world, to the bondage and to the sin. I hear that all the time. And I don't want you to be discouraged. God knows your struggle. He knows all. And He loves you and He still sends Jesus for you. I want to encourage you to learn to lean into Him even more. He is there. He is with you. 2 Peter 1.3 says His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. We have the power of God in us so that we can turn from the temptation of sin in the world. We have the power in God in us that we can repent. But I can't and you can't on our own. We need to trust God to lead us to that place of repentance. Church, I just encourage you right now as I prepare to pray to search your heart. Ask yourself, have I repented? Have I turned back to God? Are there things in my life that come between me and God? Anything that we put in our life that comes between us and God is an item of idolatry. God wants to be first. He demands to be first. He deserves to be first. He loves us. He wants to help us. He wants to bless us. He wants to show us the way. He wants to use us. But it takes repentance. And we don't have an altar that you guys can pray right where you're at. I just encourage you to be honest. And if you've struggled, and we've all been there, I just want you to ask God to forgive you. Repent. Say, God, I'm turning back to you. I'm giving you my attention. I'm living for you. Help me with the power of the Holy Spirit to live for you. Because nothing is more important than living in His will and in His blessing. It impacts not only you, but your children and your children's children. We have to have 
repentance in our hearts to live in God's grace and mercy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for your great patience, for your love for us. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, who you sent for us, and his message of repentance. Lord, we don't, we don't want to continue to sin. We don't want to continue to live in the world, but we want to live for you, to be not of this world, to be ambassadors of heaven, to represent you. We don't want to give sin the power over us, and we don't want to let the enemy trick us into thinking that sin is okay, that there isn't a hell, that there aren't consequences because of your unmerited grace and mercy, because we know there are. Lord, help us to surrender to you. Lord, heal us, heal our land, heal this body, heal each individual here today. We want to shine for you. We want to remember that you're God and that whatever we're going through and the circumstances we're facing are temporary. But eternity is forever. And we want to spend forever with you in heaven. Help us to do that. Lord, we're, we call you our Father. You're our God. And you're a good God. And everything good comes from you. We can't earn this unmerited grace and mercy. But help us to receive it. Search our hearts and reveal to us, convict us for the sin that we have in our hearts or the things that come between you and, and us. Bless each family. Help them be committed to you and living for you every day. Bless this island, Lord. Use us, Lord. Help us be the light that shines in the darkness. The world needs light. We need hope. We need Jesus. Help us be part of that plan. Lord, we love you and we're so grateful for you. Bless us. Help us to praise you through our actions and our words every day give you all the glory in your heavenly name. Amen. 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 All right, church. We have Patrick's going to come up with some announcements. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. couple announcements today. got youth camp coming up uh, this month, 23 to 26. The Emma, if, uh, for applications and registration, is going to be right here on the property. Yeah. Um, we have a barbecue happening. You guys remember when that was? This is a quiz. We talked about it last week. 26. When? The 26. Two, three people next week. Next, next. 26. <laughs> you guys got it right. Yes, 26. Where's it going to be? Here. 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 When's it going to happen? After church. After church. After church. Be here. Um, also, in August, we're going to be having um, a baptism. See pastor if you're interested. Um, and we'll set up a location where that could happen. Um, compassion. We had a great turnout of canned goods to start replenishing the pantry. Thank you, church, for bringing it. Um, there's always more that's needed. Um, bring it in, um, and we'll, we'll pass it on. Um, the last thing is men's Bible study is happening Wednesday, 6 o'clock at the pit. So be there. Love you guys. All right. All right. God bless you guys. Love you guys. Be the light. <laughs>